Hey guys, have something kind of unusual today to bring to you. These are a couple of old Swedish military revolvers. In fact, when I say old, this one is a model 1884. And I'm going to show you this one first and then we'll move on to the second one. But I, when I came across these, I thought that would make an excellent review and something that you're just not going to see every day. This is the model 1884. It is the from the Swedish Navy. Fires an 11.4 millimeter cartridge. These were actually designed by the French, by Moss. And they were French revolvers. The first double action revolver issued to French forces. This is the 1873 revolver in the French Army. They are double action and it has a really nice heavy double action trigger pull. I don't want to dry fire it because of the, as you can see, it has this um, the firing pin on the hammer and you shouldn't really dry fire revolvers. It can damage it. Like I said, the ammunition itself is 11 by 17.8 rimmed and it's a really short caliber. Um, in fact, during World War I, the Germans were using pretty much the same type revolver with a little bit longer cartridge. And so you could put the French cartridge in the German revolver, but you couldn't put the German cartridge in the French revolver. The, the caliber itself is not very powerful, even for a large round. It's uh, about 550 feet per second, and um, it just really wasn't that adequate. But this gun was carried for many years. Actually, up until 1940s, it was issued to the, still issued to the um, French Army and then used by the resistance and then also as a police sidearm in World War II. Now this was, of course, the French model. The Swedish model itself uh, was used mainly for the Navy and these are really pretty unusual pieces. A very beautiful though and you can just look at the quality of the gun itself. Now this one has been reblued as far as we can tell. So that but really when I first saw it I thought if that's an original bluing that is just incredible. Now a couple of things about the revolver itself. It's a 4.4 inch barrel and it's half round here and then it's octagonal and then round again. Um, the loading gate is really unusual. As you can see it has a, a checkering here but you pull it to the rear position and then you can load your rounds. It does hold six rounds and um, it is double action. It's non-fluted cylinder and there are some beautiful engravings on the gun itself. It has wood checkered grips, just a, an ornate, really a piece of you know history that uh, with the craftsmanship and the quality of these guns. Uh, it does have, uh, the, the lanyard is missing, the lanyard loop but it does have this nice cap and uh, of course you know you can see where the uh, the strap is front strap the barrel and the frame on this particular model is uh, does have matching serial numbers now one unique feature is to remove the cartridges you take this lever push it up and then out and then when you have your exp expended rounds you can run the uh, run this through to drive out your empty shells. Then when you want to put it back you just lift and it goes back over. I really don't know if you can even find ammunition for this gun but to be honest with you I would love it. I think it would be a lot of fun to shoot something like this. It has a nice lock up as well. Look at the checkering on that hammer. These were used uh, extensively during World War One, especially with the French. But uh, just a really nice revolver. This is the model 1887 officer's model for the Swedish military and this was made though by Husqvarna which was an improvement over the original Nagant design. It was designed by Nagant. In fact it fires the uh, 7.5 Nagant round. Those are fairly hard to come by. Uh, they are available here and there but th that's very similar to 32 ACP. In fact many of these were converted to 32 ACP in the 50s. Uh, there were about 14,000 of these made by Husqvarna issued to the, the uh, Swedish military. Uh, it was issued from 1887 to 1905, but served the Swedish military 
up until 1947. It is a six shot. It has a, a fluted cylinder, as you can see. It is a four and a half inch barrel, and you can see that it is an octagon barrel with a round, uh, the beginning of the barrel is round. Nice wood grips as well. Uh, does have a lanyard on the bottom with a nice cap. Just an unusual lockup. This gate, loading gate, swings out though, and then it, you load your rounds this way. It's kind of like a hybrid between the old single actions and then going into the, the uh, new double actions. Weighs about 24 ounces, and it's a nice, graceful piece, though. It's well balanced in the hand. Uh, one of the things about the um, 1884 model, it is, it is a joy to hold. I don't know what it is about it, but it's so beefy. Both of these pistols are very pointable and just seem to naturally be a shooter. I would really like to shoot this one. Uh, the price on this one, I couldn't find a price on the 1884. But uh, the price on this 1887, the cheapest I found was $500, and that guy even said that's the cheapest price available. I've seen most of them were in the six to six to seven hundred range. The 1887 did have the original leather holster, uh, even with for cartridges. But uh, just a beautiful piece with a brass little catch here, reinforced. The revolver fits very nicely into the holster. The 1884 and the 1887 model revolver of the Swedish military. And uh, just a great piece of history. Just the stories that these guns could tell. And as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more fun gun reviews and sensible survival. God bless America. Long live the Republic. A design by Gant. Use the Nagant, which Nagant was a Belgian, uh, and he did design really great. Blah 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 blah.